Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and in this short lesson, we're going to cover the MPLAB X simulator, which is an important piece of uh, software that the integration development environment has for debugging in software what's happening uh, in our microcontroller. So we can do this without having access to a piece of hardware. Uh, what we need to just cover within this short lesson is how to set up and invoke the simulator. We also want to know how to view the logic analyzer, which is a particularly important tool um, in order to determine and uh, what is actually happening with our program. And also how to view port pin peripherals, which is another way of seeing the same sort of data that we will see with the logic analyzer, but it also gives us some other piece of information as well. Uh, so firstly, to set up the simulator, what we need to do is to make sure that the simulator is set to record data in the first place. The simulator, in order to show us what's actually going on, it needs to be recording data as it's running. That wouldn't happen by default because it uses up quite a bit of space, so we need to set that uh, to turned on. This requires that the trace be turned on, and I'll show you how to do that in one moment. Um, the other thing is that in the project properties, we should set the target to simulator. Oftentimes uh, in the project, you would set the target to some piece of hardware that you were ready to develop for. And I don't just mean the 16F88 uh, PIC or anything like that. I mean that it would be ready to run through a particular piece of um, programming hardware that would then program the chip. So if you were trying to write for some particular piece of uh, physical target that, that came onto the list, that's what you would, uh, you would normally set in the project. However, we want to set it so that it runs on the simulator um, and therefore we need to set it for that if it isn't already set for that already, which it may well be. Uh, so instead of building the project, uh, then finally, so previously uh, what we did was we, we went up to um, execute and we, 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 we clicked the build uh, button in order to actually build it to, to see that it's uh, compiled and linked and loaded properly. In this case, though, we will use the debug instead because that is what will invoke the simulator to actually run. Okay, uh, so let's just look at those. We need to turn the trace on, we need to set the target to simulator, and we need to then run the debugger. So let's uh, take a look at that. Where is my MPLAB X? There it is. So um, turn the trace on, first of all. So if I right mouse click on, uh, on the project here, go down to properties, and you can see that it's already set to the simulator. So this is uh, the, the output is set uh, as in the hardware tool, even though it's not a hard, a phys physically a hardware tool, it's set for the simulator. So that's perfectly fine. We don't need to change that. But under the simulator here, we have different options. And under the options here, I want to go down to trace. And we want to set that data collection is turned on. Well, we call it instruction trace, but it's, it's turned on in any case. Okay. So um, we'll click apply on that. Again, these sometimes can take a bit of time. So just while we're doing that, we'll go back to uh, the presentation here to see what we need to do next. We need In the project properties, we need to set the target simulator. That was already done, but if it wasn't in your case, you need to do it. And um, then instead of building the project, we need to debug the project by invoking the debugger. So uh, that's the next thing to do. So we'll click OK, ready to go. So under um, this is just taking a moment to uh, fully reset. There we are, I'm ready to go. So we could go and build the project again, but we don't want to do that. We want to actually debug the project. Um, so we can click that there. Now there's also a little. Uh, icon for that here. So it's a little bit simpler to just go and click that. So this takes a little bit of time, uh, as long as the compile process are probably a bit longer because it has to include all the debugging information so that it's ready to actually uh, take all that information as it's running. Okay. So it's uh, launching, it's initializing the simulator, and the user program is now running. And we can see that a little uh, window has opened up here called the simulator. Okay. And uh, not a whole lot happening on the simulator at the moment. However, uh, under the under this section up here, we can see that there are a lot of different things that we can look at. And one of the things is the uh, logic analyzer. 
So if I click on that, this allows me to look at the logic analyzer and as you can see, there's nothing happening at the moment. So going back to the presentation, this is how to view the logic analyzer. So you just click on it, it that, that tab will appear once the, uh, the simulator is running. Um, and what we need to do is we need to add port pins to the logic analyzer. So to do that, I can go over here and I can click on the little chip here and I can decide what port pins I want to use. Now, as it happened in my program, you may remember, you may not, and that's a very simple program that we set up. Uh, it was port B that we were dealing with and I was going to send some uh, uh, particular thing out to it. So the, here they are, RB0 up to RB7. So I'm going to include all of those. I want to look at the signals that are on them and click OK on that. Now that has opened each one of these and we can see that each one can have either a high or a low um, output because they're digital. Each one has a different color associated. You'll notice that nothing has come up yet and that's because it's, it's currently uh, capturing the thing. But if I click pause, um, I'll click play again so that it starts to uh, starts taking in the input. And if I click pause again, uh, we can see that we now have signals on the uh, on the trace there. Okay. Now, the number that I put in, you can actually still see it here. It's the one little piece that didn't um, didn't get closed off when I when I moved this window up a little larger. You can see that I've put out the signal AA out to it. Now AA is hex. But uh, if I was to um, show that as uh, as binary, it would be um, one zero one zero one zero and one zero. Okay. So the lowest bit there, the least significant bit, should be a zero, and that's indeed what we're seeing here. So if we look at RB zero, which is the red one, it is indeed a zero. The next one is a one. The next one is zero. The next one is a one. The next one is a zero. The next one is a one, and then. These next were quite difficult to see because of the poor colors that uh, they've chosen for the um, for the signal. But what you should notice is that while this one is a zero, this one is also a zero and it should be a one. The most significant bit there should be a one and it isn't. So there is some little issue here that we haven't taken care of. And actually that is going to be the basis of the first exercise that I'm going to get you to, to do. But uh, for the moment, um, I want to pop back to the presentation because we want to see the last thing that we want to do, which is we want to view port pin peripherals. Um, so this will show the current state of any of the pins, and it also gives us information about the configuration of the pin, uh, which we may find useful. So back into MPLAB X, we can go to IO pins here, and we can decide that we want to show some pins. So uh, let's uh, put a watch on some new pins. Sorry. And uh, I want to watch each of the pins there that I mentioned earlier. So RB0. And you can just right mouse click on these and they will come up. Uh, each new pin. RB2. RB3. Sorry, I've hit RB4 again and I didn't mean to. And RB7. Okay. Now, you can see the present state of these at the moment. It's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then something strange here for these last two. 0 volts and 0 volts. And if we look over here, and again, you know, if you play this, you can see them that they, they will change, or well, they won't actually change, of course, at the minute, because we've them set to something specific, but in, in, in programs where they would be changing with time, uh, you would actually see them uh, updating themselves very, very quickly. Um, but there's clearly an issue with these last two, that they're, they're not saying zero or one, they're saying zero volts, so there's something wrong there. And what we notice here is that the mode that they're in, these are all D out, which stands for digital output, but these last two are a out, which stands for analog output. And the thing is that the PIC microcontrollers can be set up uh, to be set up as some of the port pins can be set up to be either digital outputs or analog outputs. And of course, as inputs as well. So they're, they're, they're multi-purpose. Now, the, that's all fine. But, but the problem is that we are supposed to set up those pins for the particular purpose we want. Clearly, in, in this situation, I want them to be digital outputs. 
but I didn't do anything to actually set them up that way. I just hoped that they were already set up that way already, which worked for six of them, but not for the other two. So one of the exercises that you're going to get um, after this is that you're going to be asked to look up the manual for the for this particular microcontroller, which is the 16F88. Just to remind you, that's it down there, 16F88. And uh, going to try and figure out how it would be that we would actually configure these uh, port pins to make sure that they were uh, digital outputs, all of them digital outputs instead of two of them being analog outputs. Okay, so just to remind you what we covered in this lesson. Um, we, we looked at how to set up and invoke the simulator, so make sure you know how to do that. And uh, within that, we needed to turn certain turn on certain settings and so on. Uh, we looked at how to view the logic analyzer, and uh, that's a particularly useful device for seeing timing signals and so on uh, to do with the port pins. And um, we also looked at how to look at the individual port pins themselves, the current value on them, but also the setup. And that's what found us that there was a little bit of a problem, something we didn't take into account because our program is so simplistic and we didn't set up the configuration properly. Okay.